In today's video, I'm going to restore this pocket knife on the bottom. I was going to do both of them originally, but then decided to scrap that idea as I ran into a couple of hiccups on the one that I did restore. So this thing was pretty rusty and not much was able to move freely. Even the key ring here was pretty tight. And just looking at this thing, it's probably a good idea for me to update my tetanus shot. Opening the wrong way there, Jim. So there was a good bit of pitting on the can opener, but the other pieces did not have too much of a problem. Actually, I take that back. The key ring was kind of bad. So the first step here was taking it to the wire wheel to get off the big pieces of rust. and Definitely get careful on the wire wheel. If you're not paying attention, you can have it where the wire wheel will kick the blade onto your fingers. So certainly wear gloves. And here I ran out of my normal rust remover, so I tried a new, a new type. This is Rust-Oleum, and it worked pretty well, but it smells. I didn't care for the smell of it at all. So I didn't really read the directions. I'm not sure how long they recommend you leave it in there, but I left it in overnight. So we'll call it a good 24 hours. And after letting it sit. It did a very similar process as most of the rust removers where a lot of the rust turns black like this. Just to give you an idea, you can see it kind of looks like tar, but it freed it up where it's a little bit more easy to, the parts opened a little more easily. And here, this is a really bad way to do it. It's kind of a boneheaded move. You can kind of see that that blade could easily kick back if you're not paying attention. Once I got the big pieces on the outside, just took a really light brass wheel and got the inside and then one of these kind of picks to get down the inside even further. But it cleaned up pretty nicely. And you can see that the brass is actually shiny gold now versus the kind of silver. The downside is once I got it all clean, I realized that some of the rust had been holding together the broken spring here. So that was a bummer. After doing all that work, I realized that the spring was broken, so went online and ordered a replacement. So in order to get the other half of it, get my hand out of the way, but you can see you have to grind off the pin that's holding it and then what I did was took a piece of scrap wood drilled a small hole so the pin when I knock it out will have somewhere to go I'm not gonna lie I did have to stop the footage because it took me forever to pull this pin out. I made it look like it was a quick easy process but I should have driven it through a little bit further than I did. So once the pin was out I went ahead and took out the, the good spring too and then gave it a good cleaning which I did that off camera. And while I was waiting on the postal service to deliver the replacement spring, I tried out this chisel sharpener for the knife blade and it worked out okay. I didn't realize that I'd scrapped all the footage till later. So once the replacement spring came in, just put the old pieces together on top of it and kind of outlined the shape. I couldn't find a spring that matched exactly, so I bought one that was larger and then just ended up sanding it down. So 
So here you can see I started with a chisel, or excuse me, not a chisel, but a file, and mine are not exactly the best files, so I scrapped that idea and switched it over to a an actual sand sander. So then I just got some scrap wood that I liked and it's going to use that for the blank. And then got some really aggressive sandpaper to make quick work of the excess wood and have it fit in there more nicely. And since I don't have a sander anymore, I decided to put this sander in the vise and work on it that way. It works. So again, this is really aggressive sandpaper, so it's a quick trial and error where I would start and stop it and see how much it fit, because it would take big chunks off if you're not paying attention. So once I got it to size, mixed up a little bit of epoxy, and then attached the blank to the knife using that. And you do only want to do one side at a time. And the reason is you won't know where the pin location is if you do both of them at the same time. So just do one side of the blank and then once it dries then drill a hole through. Here, I just used finishing nails. I didn't have any brass rods or anything more sophisticated, but this certainly serves its purpose. And I will say where I messed up along the way here is you should definitely, if you've sharpened your blade, cover it up with something. I didn't pay attention and left it open like that and ended up slicing my hand later. And that was just a, a boneheaded move on my part. Once I've got both sides on there, went back to the sander and used it to get rid of the, the bulk of most of the material here. And this was a bad, a bad effort here. So on the nail that I used, I left too much exposed on both sides rather than getting a little more fine-tuned. And when I did, having that much made it so the, the piece just split the wood. So then I had to go and get some other wood and try it again. So that was kind of a bummer. So off camera I had to get rid of all the resin that had dried from the last block. So I repeated the same process with just a different type of wood. And And then I'm hammering the nail so that way it'll make a, a rounded edge and it won't slip out. And then here after screwing up the first piece of wood that you saw on camera I did mess up another one, so this is my third one, and by this time I was being a little more cautious and taking my sweet time with the chisel, but that's where I ended up cutting my finger, so. Anyway, don't watch my videos for safety. I think I've said it a couple of times now. But certainly do as I say, not as I do. But. So here I ended up taking too much of a chunk with the chisel and then just took some of the shavings from when I was sanding earlier and some super glue and just patched it up a little bit. Then once that was finished, I got the Dremel and kind of fine tuned it. And now I've got the blade covered up. 
once I got it all sanded down, then took some acetone to get rid of all the residue, but when you do, you're going to soak up all the oil out of the wood, so it's not the best approach, but what I did after that was just use some 3M1 oil to get through all the joints and then went ahead and lathered up the wood while I was at it. And again, I've never done that before. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but it worked for this piece. So after letting that sit for a little bit, I covered up the wood pieces and then went over to the buffing wheel so that way I could make it shiny. And then came back and took some uh, Murphy's wax for the wood portions. And here's what it looks like. So again, it's pretty shiny on the ends. I, if I had removed the key ring, I probably could have made this other end a little more shiny, but again, this was a quick project since I hadn't done a video in a while due to work and painting my office and some other things that got me sidetracked. But here's some before and after photos. Thanks for watching.